Hello friends, Yossi here. How's everyone doing? Happy New Year. 2019. Are you excited? I am. So, uh, today a few topics. The first one is how to make great investments in 2019, where to invest in Toronto and around the area in 2019. Where are the opportunities for investments in 2019? Besides that, I want to go over a couple other things. Uh, I want to give you at the end of this video a bit of a market report. Numbers came out, and I want to give it a bit of a, my own twist. Everyone has their own. And go over a couple of things. So let's start. You ready? Here we go. Okay. My last video was my eight tips for successful investing in 2019. There it is. I think it's actually, it was pretty good. Um, I, I enjoyed it listening to it after I recorded and kind of like relaxing and take it, taking a look at what I've done there. And I think there's some good information. Um, <clears throat> a few things. There's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm an optimist, positive person. You know, I think that things are always happening for a good reason and why. And, and what I went over this video is really showing you what's going on and where the market's going and where opportunities are, and I was going over some areas around of Toronto. We looked into Niagara, which is uh, still happening. Three of the models are uh, now sold out, but there's uh, a few other models which are very, very good. The prices are still in that pre-VIP. So if you're interested in Niagara, give me a shout, register, I'll send you the information. It's a pack of 31 page PDF plus a lot of other stuff. Uh, Yossi Kaplan at Yossi Kaplan at Twitter, urbanrealtytoronto.com. I changed this site here and there, but here's all the information I've been uploading for you and more is coming, I'm working on editing now. Uh, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash channel, blah, 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 or slash yossikaplan.com. And you'll see all the videos uploaded here. There's uh, about 100 videos here. A few kind of got lost through the years, but there's probably another 100 on my hard drive sitting from whenever, but doing what we can and here what you'll get on the video channel is a lot of information of how I interpret the market how I see it going where I see it going and also some cool stuff like some large penthouses um, what's happening for sales pre-construction etc anything that has to do with Toronto and the area real estate uh, yossikaplan.com I've owned that domain forever and I finally during the uh, holidays kind of gave a bit of a, of a look and I love how it looks now it's got videos it's got select pre-construction condos. It's got some real estate videos. It's got the feeds from the other side, so you can just connect quickly to anything you want. It's got some of our work in Brantford. 33 Jarvis, we have five townhomes out of the 30. The only five with assignment clauses. These are fantastic. I highly recommend take a look. If you're looking for a townhome for in the half a million range, there you go. Across from a school, can't go wrong with that. 85 Morel is, uh, is uh, less than a mile away from Jarvis, also in Brantford. Beautiful old uh, factory used to be, and they just, I think they didn't leave anything, maybe the floor, and rebuilt it, and it looks amazing. Everything's new in there. Okay, our mailing list, the feeds from the other sites, the links to the searches, everything is here for you. Okay, Yorkville Luxury Real Estate, that's where I put my million plus properties and things I really like. There you go. Okay. Urban Realty, we looked at it. Okay. Let's start. The first news of the day that is that is actually relates to real estate, in my opinion, is that the new food guide. So I didn't even realize that there was a new food guide, but it kind of caught my eye when I was browsing around. And they, I don't know if they took the dairy out or they, they cut it out. And look at this, Narc City. I don't know who owns it, but remember, all media is fake media. All news is fake news. And what it means, it means that whomever is posting these things, you know, whoever owns Narc City have an interest. And Canadian Grocer uh, has interest. And there's Narc City again and again in Global News. And everyone here have an interest. So remember, when you look at news, for whatever it is, especially if it's real estate, they have interest. And ask yourselves, what is the interest of these corporations or government to show you this information and, and go from there? Anyway, this here says that many Canadians are convinced that cutting dairy products on the new food guide is a huge mistake. And then they go and they find all these Twitters. I don't know who these people are and if they have like one follower or two. Uh, who knows? Um, but you can find someone on Twitter and then show it like, you know, you can just make an account, put a thing. Nobody knows. It doesn't tell you how many followers are here. And then uh, you can make a tweet and say, hey, that's what everyone's thinking. <laughs> okay. And uh, same here. I mean, this could be manufactured. This could be completely botched. Who knows? And 
Who the hell is Andrew Samis, MD, PhD? You got enough letters there, buddy? Even more than me. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what he's saying. Don't think unscientific. Don't think the new one will do any. Okay, so he's not actually saying anything, this guy. Okay, so this is really a huge battle of money, okay? Uh, this is about money, and this is about the dairy industry, which is which is the, the the biggest lobbying industry in the world. They have the most amount of lobbyists and lobbying efforts and money lobbying. Um, they're putting a lot of pressure on governments and corporations to sell their own products. So that's what you see here. Okay, it's not about the milk. It's about the income that these people make. And they're fighting for it, and they don't care. That's their product, and they want you to buy it. They don't even care if you drink it or not. Just buy it. And all these people here, they're either working for them or they're working for them and not realizing they're working for them. You got my point. Let's go. All right, what do I got here for you? You'll see that searchrealty.co, that's the interface for the, um, for the uh, uh, resale. Okay, so... I've reopened already some areas like Yorkville. You can just punch Yorkville by latest listing, or you can go, by the way, to Urban Realty. And this is all connected in a second because I want to show you what's going on with the prices and where the deals are. Okay, so each of these will pop one of these windows here. So here's Yorkville sorted by latest listing. I can see 160 Bedford is here, 75 Saint Nicholas is here, on and on and on. And what's important here is once you start following and coming back to the same page for a couple of days in a row or you log in an interface and set up a search and it'll send you the, the alerts, you can start seeing where the market's going. You can kind of get an idea. And by getting an idea, I mean you'll see if one listing been in the market for a long time or you're going to recognize the listing because of the address. You've seen it a few times and you see if the price has changed or not. Okay, I showed you in the last video how to look for reduced price videos. It's in the filters here. And you open the tags, and then there's a reduced one, reduced price 17 here. So try that. I made more, more information in the previous video. It tells you exactly how to use it and what to be aware of. Okay, uh, you can also look at highest price. Usually the ones in the high, high millions, you know, they'll, they'll stay there for a bit. Um, did this work? doing something in the meantime uh, here we are in another area that's King West so you can come back to this page and see if there's anything new in King West but what you can see from scanning this obviously been here forever um, but you know the one and two bedrooms they come and go and then you can recognize like I, I recognize this listing from a while back on the same price so but you know it was holidays and uh, New Year's and all that, so there's always a market lull for a few weeks, and then, and then it comes back, and I've been getting a lot of calls already for the year, which is great. Uh, so here's a studio at, at Thompson for 450. Here's a unit, and you can see this is less than a thousand a foot. I'm not even looking in it. I'm, I'm just taking a, a quick scan, looking at this number here, then looking at this number here. Okay, so I look at the price, I look at the square footage, and I kind of try to estimate is it more or less than a thousand a foot. So slightly less, about a thousand here, so I mean six hundred square feet. If the unit is larger than six hundred, then this price is less than a thousand, right? Eight eight eight, so that's on the high end of a thousand, so it could be eleven hundred if the unit is in the lower range. This one is a unique case. This is well below that's an older building. No balconies and stuff. So and the condo fees on this one slightly higher. Therefore the price always depressed. Okay, you see you see my point? Uh, here's Fashion House, third third floor. Third floor, they don't have balconies, and they don't have any views unless they're on the side. But I think I think this one is right above the cake there. Uh, okay, so 1,000 a foot. 39 brand, just up the street. How many square feet? Okay, so 1,000 a foot. 525 out of way. This, by the way, is the same as this one. This here, they use a, a render from five years ago, Lazy Agent, and this has a picture. So 700,000 for up to 700. So you're looking at you're looking at a thousand a foot asking prices here. Queen West. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring these because these are unique properties that can skew my understanding of the market. I'm, I just want to see the bread and butter here. Okay, so 68 Able. Or a bell, as some people call it. 
just under a thousand. What do we have here? Just under a thousand. That's the same one we looked at. Uh, Lisgar, well under a thousand. Lisgar is a problematic building, if you know. So and, and and it's a kind of a lower, you know, lower ceilings, lower finishes. Had a lot of issues when he was uh, uh, finishing. So it's still slightly depressed. But comparing to what he sold for, people made a fortune here. So it's it's a perspective. If you were to buy first and we stood all the punishment, you still made a lot of money. But this one took a bit. Uh, Five sixty Front Street, just a thousand. This one we looked at. Uh, 20 Gladstone, these only come and go very quickly, just under a thousand. Ignoring these houses, not sure why they came in. 51 Florence, those are the townhouses that I, I had an article about in one of the sites, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you can see that we're averaging here a thousand on King West for the resale, asking for these units, and maybe slightly less if it's a B or C location. Okay, it also depends what you define as A. Some people, for them, A is uh, Young and Bloor, but for sure Young and Bloor is most expensive and Yorkville is most expensive. And then, so those will be 1,200 and more. Some of the buildings at, uh, at um, Yorkville will be 2,000 a foot, but you know, it's just like four seasons. And Shangri-La will score maybe 15 and Nobu 15 and so on. And, and, and um, Maybe Bisha also in a 12 to 15 on some units, a thousand on the less fortunate floor plans. Remember, buy the good floor plans. Okay, and, and, and then it goes it goes down from there. And the whole market basically rises and falls together. Now the interesting part is um, and I'm gonna move a bit to the market stuff here. Well, okay, so <laughs> there was an article here. I think it was here that was saying that house prices basically move together around the world. You see that one, and and what it means, uh, I can't even find it anymore. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I can't see it now, but uh, what what it means? It means that that all around the world we start to be more and more connected. So when prices is in one country, especially one of the Commonwealth, one of the five I's, which is the U.S., Canada, U.K., Australia, and New Zealand, right? Those five countries, <clears throat> which are kind of very connected, very closely, obviously. <coughs> um, those countries are connected very well together, and of course, huge influence from China, from the oil producers, and so on and so forth. Okay, from from the the, the larger and Russia, of course. The, the larger economic power you are, China, Russia, India, oil producers, U, U.S. obviously, the more effect you have on world economy. And if all your countries are tight, tight connected, especially between governments like the Commonwealth countries are, then what happens in one country is likely to affect another because it's, it's going to be a test. So, you know, before anything major happens in the U.K., maybe we test it in Australia, New Zealand, or Canada which are smaller versions of us, and see how they react to it, learn from that, and, and, and go from there. Okay, so you're going to start seeing more and more world events and world economy connected. The whole thing is flattening out, becoming like a one entity. It's happening quite quickly, actually, considering that, you know, before Internet, it would take us hundreds of years to make a little change. So the Magna Carta came in the 1200s, and then the French Revolution in the 1700s, and then Industrial Revolution in the 1900s. And now we have Internet Revolution, Digital Revolution, on and on. Okay. Oh, there it is. Toronto, Vancouver, not alone as global housing downturn takes hold. So up or down, it all goes together. When Canada went up, Australia went up. When Australia goes down, Canada will go down. Why? Because they're similar. One reflects the other in many, many ways. Okay. Both colonies of the old times. Okay. A couple other things that really interest me. Uh, renovations set to set rise in 2019, report predicts. What's a renovation? Renovation is another way to say the owner of the unit, which is a retail investor, just, just a little guy like me and you. We bought a condo or two, and now our costs went up, the mortgage went up, the taxes went up, the condo fees went up, but the rent's not going up. So I'm starting to make less and less money 
or maybe I'm losing money because I can't keep up. The rent's not keeping up. That's the main reason you see rents rising. And there was another article that said rent will rise in Toronto by 11% or whatever. It will rise every year because the cost of the owners are rising. And it's not like it's the condo owner's fault because you can go to a, a rental building and then rent from a company. You know, the, the entire company owns the whole building. There's a lot of these coming up, like uh, Honest Ed's. I think there's a couple of those buildings coming up. And all over the place, you'll see rental buildings. We haven't really had many of them built since the 70s and the 80s. Um, another reason why we don't have enough rental units in Toronto. Okay? So the the costs are pro prohibiting the owners. It, it's, it's, it's kind of a... a, a a cat and mouse kind of game because in order for me to reduce the cost of rent I need to have more units on the market and more units at a cheaper rate for the owners to buy them and to hold them so then they can offer a product and still make a little bit of a profit so it makes sense for them to invest the money and for the renters to pay something that is affordable to them so that's the, the fine balance here but as long as the cost of the owners increase the rents will increase too and when you do the, um, the rent control, you eventually investors will think twice whether to buy another unit because the price of the unit went up, but, I, but the, the rent doesn't catch up, so they start to lose money. If they lose money, they don't want to do it. They're going to find other ways for the money to invest. And then we have less units on the market, and then the price rises even further. That's why we just have to have more units on the market. Like I said in many videos, maybe all of them, we need a million beds in Toronto. We need a million beds in Canada. 452,000 immigrants to Canada last year. I saw it somewhere yesterday. 452,000. So, you know, a quarter million to, on to Ontario. Easy. All right. This is always full. That's a good thing. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of sensationalist uh, um, uh, t t titles, big, big words here. Eh, you know, it's okay. They, they, the Huffington Post has, has to score high on Google on the search engine war, like, like the stars. So they're all using these upworthy style comments, okay? But at the end of the day, what happens is that we need more beds. We need more beds, and people need a place to sleep, and it's, it's not going to stop. Okay, so if you look at the graphs here, so this is the Toronto Real Estate Board Market Watch. Okay, um, when you look at the annual, by the way, a real estate board site is not secure. That's a joke. Secure it. Download is not secure. Yossi Kaplan site, secure. Twitter, secure. Yorkville, secure. Urban Realty, secure. Yossi Kaplan, secure. Toronto Real Estate Board, not secure. Not cool. All right, Market Watch. There's two. There's the little, uh, the little one and the big one. Start with the little one. You can see they posted this uh, just a couple of days ago. And the average price for the GTA for resale, this does not include assignments and does not include new sales because the Toronto Real Estate Board does not have access to these to that information. Only the government of Canada knows, okay, these things. Um, okay, so the average price here was 822727 in 2017 with 92,000 92, sales, okay. Uh, the most amount of sales we had in 2016, lots of units changing hands, people taking profits, people jumping in the market. And then there's 100,000 uh, uptick from 2016 to 17. That's crazy. There's basically 100,000 in 15, 16, 17. So now it came down a bit because it just went so fast, so, so fast. It didn't even come to 2017 prices. So look at this. Uh, Okay, so here, like, uh, about here. Okay, so if we score around 20, this one here, that's 2016. 2016 prices, we more or less on the same trajectory as all these years. So if you think that we're going to score this year average price in 2016 of uh, 730, 729, 
So that means that we have about sixty thousand, uh, not even yeah, sixty sixty thousand dollars to drop. Say I don't know, uh, seven or eight percent. Not the end of the world, my friends, because we're still making crazy, crazy money, and that means that we can go back to this level a year or two after. Now this may or may not happen because we don't have enough supply. So that is the problem. And I'm going to show you here what I mean, okay? So remember, this is not safe, not secure, and the numbers go from left to right, not from, from the future to the past. I would do it reverse. 4,800, uh, what is this? Trotto sales activity for December 2017, and 1,100 less in December 2018. Now, that's a lot, okay? That's 20-some percent. And what are the reasons for that? Well, the first reason is, you know, we got scared in 2018 so much. Uh, and the mortgage rules and all these things designed to kind of slow down the economy. And then the feds want to make money. So they start cranking up the interest rates. And then the politicians telling the feds, you're ruining the economies. you got to stop doing it. So maybe they'll stop doing it to get kind of more wind in the market. Remember, the Fed is a private corporation that prints your money. And then you buy that money through the banks, okay? And then the bank basically sells you the money with interest. But then money is quote-unquote printed, generated ones and zeros on some computer by a private corporation called the Federal Reserve. I, I, I think you know that. Most people know that by now. The government of Canada or the United States or any government do not have any access to these private corporations. And they really, they can't do anything. Like the, the Federal Reserve can decide about everything, about global economy. They are very, very powerful, okay? They can, they can do anything they want. They print the money, and you buy the money through the bank. That's how it works. And that's why, if you remember, when I did the video, um, the Bitcoin video, I explained that all money is really, it's fake money. It just printed, and then we all decide, you know, what's the value of a dollar, and go from there. Okay. Treb, Treb MLS average price, so like you saw in uh, in the previous chart, and here this is goes to a month level seven three four eight four seven in seventeen the seven fifty. So we had a bit of appreciation. This is average in twenty eighteen, and I guarantee you that the beginning of twenty eighteen it was huge appreciation. At the end of twenty eighteen it was less or maybe even negative appreciation. And the average for twenty eighteen was seven fifty. For December and for the year 787 that means that December is actually halfway to the target of 730 of average so maybe we'll get below the 730 average okay but you see what I'm saying in order for if, if, if December is below the annual average that means that we had uptick at the beginning of the year and then down at the end so if you look at the price of December it'll be, it'll be lower here It'll be like around here, okay, 750. So it'll, it'll be like 2016 and a half. So it's so we'll see. Um, we'll keep an eye to see if it's hitting the 730. If it's hitting the 730 in the next few months, it'll be very interesting to see if it'll keep hitting lower. So let's talk about what could make the market go up or down and what the opportunities are. So that's the most amount of part of fun is. If you're a real investor, you don't really care if the market going up or down. You always find an angle to invest. And that's easy because if you understand that, I guarantee you that 99.99999% of any other people, all the other people, including most agents, mortgage brokers, developers, and economists, all these people, they, they, they would know where to find a deal. All they know, most people, all they know is we buy now. And then we wait for it to appreciate. But there's other ways to do it, okay? There's other ways to buy property below market value, even below tomorrow's market value. And I'll show you. Okay. So I want to go over this, and then we're not going to go into the, the crazy numbers. Do it, do it on your own time. Okay, so sales average and average price by major home type. And you can see that the sales 2018, uh, there's a couple of things that I noticed here earlier. The sales of detached home, okay, I said here they reduced by 24 percent 
in the 416, so a quarter less, 15% less in 905, 17 average, and the price of detached by 8%. Just went too, too, too high, way too high. Just fast, fast, fast. It's got to slow down. So it's going to come down a bit. I don't, I don't think it's crashing, but I think it's just basically catching up to what it needs to be, which is, you know, inflation plus three, four, five points. That's where we wanted to see it. We want to see real estate as a hedge for economy. So we want to see healthy real estate and healthy for the economy. We just want to see it steady, steady, steady. And if it goes up too fast, then we'll cool it off a little bit and then wait for inflation to catch up with the real estate and then keep going. Because at the end of the day, you have to have some tools for hedging. So real estate is one, you know, there's gold, there's stocks, some of them do better or less. There's all kinds of these tools. Real estate is a major, major tool. Townhouses, not too many. I think townhouses are an amazing investment, by the way. I'd really like townhouses, especially new ones. And they average 714 here. And they went up by 10%. Look at that. And the condos went up by 11.4%. Why is that? Although they sell a lot less. All these sales are down by a lot. Why? So what happens is the condo prices are going up and the, the detached price is coming down. And the semi in the towns are kind of like a hybrid version. One's a hybrid version of a, of a detached, which is the, the semi. And then the townhouse is kind of a ground level hybrid version of a house slash condo. So those two are kind of similar. That's why they, they perform kind of similar. And what happens is when the houses come down and the condos go up, the difference in price between the house and the condo is getting less and less per square foot. So condos are being more desired and more popular and more sought after because they're new and they're easy, easier living and they're, they're more technically advanced and they're safer and all that stuff. And you don't have to replace the roof and no maintenance. So people are willing to pay more for them. 20 years ago, people were laughing at condos and saying, I want my own land and da, 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 da. But now things are different. People are very busy. They just want to come home, do their thing, and then get out. And they don't want to, you know, take out the garbage on a rainy day or get the roof fixed or your basement flooded, all these things, okay? It takes a lot of time and money. It takes a lot of cash. And condo just has no maintenance. Worst case in the condo is a dishwasher breaks. You call the Home Depot, give me your credit card number and another dishwasher and a technician shows up the next day and it's done. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So that's that's what I got for you guys. The opportunities are here. The opportunities are it, <laughs> where is it? In the assignments. Okay. You'll see Kaplan assignments. Yeah, why opportunities on assignments? Because there's a lot of people that purchase in the last couple of years are six and have six and seven hundred dollars a foot. And when the market goes to a thousand, and then maybe you can get it for nine hundred or eight hundred, you can do a great deal. Because basically you're saying to the original investors, we'll split the profit with you. You know, it's a little too risky. The market's adjusting for the next uh, year, maybe. So give us a little discount on your asking price. You're still going to make money, and there's enough margin for me to be able to make some money. That's a great opportunity. I would look for assignments with the owner and say, you know what? I don't care of making $200,000. I'm happy with making 100 or maybe 50. Take the unit off their hands. It's a good unit. It's a good floor plan. It makes sense. You'll, you'll do really well. Because at the end of the day, everyone needs a place to stay. And there's lots of people coming to Canada. There's lots of natural immigration from the country to the city. We just need more beds. We need more rooms. We need more roofs, etc., etc. Okay? That is the message for today. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> Do your research. Look at different opportunities outside of Toronto. I think outside of Toronto is phenomenal. There's a lot of stuff in the $500, give or take, 500 a foot. I think it's, it's really, really important. Okay? Over a million... That's a whole other level. New townhomes, they're running in the million range, could be just phenomenal because they're brand new, so there's nothing to break, no maintenance, all new, new construction, new technology. Good in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Brantford, I showed you. I think it's very good. I think everything around like Brantford, Niagara, Hamilton, Kitchener, Guelph, Waterloo, worth, worth taking a look at. Really, more videos here for you to enjoy and to learn. And that's it for today. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next video. You'll see up.